Should be good. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another weekly TFP live stream. Uh, here, as always, my name's Brandon, and uh, we're trying some new things out. Tyler has been working. I don't know if it's called work, really, but he has been doing something behind the scenes, as always. Luckily, we keep him well, like, well behind the scenes. I think even, like, there's, like, another set of scenes that he's behind. Keep him way back there, usually in a basement. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is cool. Hopefully this is enjoyable. We're trying to make this production even more and more professional. Uh, we have got a ton to talk about, as always. Every week, it seems like we've got more and more exciting news to bring you, so I couldn't be more excited. Uh, as always, I am joined by Tyler over here, our producer. He's still working. I don't know if he'll come on the screen. Pat is here with me, of course, as always, as well. And yeah, we're just gonna hit it hard tonight. We're gonna start right off with, we are super proud to announce, you may have seen the excellent video that Pat and Steve put out regarding the tactical games. So as we've hinted at, we have become the first affiliate in New York State for the tactical games. Dare I say one of the first or the first in the entire Northeast of the United States. Super cool, we're super proud of that. Pat went down there uh, to Shooter's Gauntlet in Pennsylvania couple months ago, absolutely crushed it down there, did amazing for his first time out. And we came back here and we were like, yeah, we need to be doing these up here. So that's what we're doing. So you can go on our website right now. Hopefully once he gets situated over here, Tyler can drop some links in the chat. Uh, you can go up and sign up and save yourself 20 bucks right now. Normally this one day tactical, uh, we're calling this combat athleticism. This would be a $120 course of fire, right? And it is going to be, like, I'm calling this thing Pat's House of Pain because this is going to be a fun uh, but strenuous day where you're really going to be able to test what you're made of, where you stand um, at what we consider a really good baseline, again, for combat athleticism. So we'd love to have you come out. If you pre-register now, the links are up, or they will be shortly here, hopefully. Uh, if you register now, it's only $99 for this one-day event. So we are super excited about that. We hope to see at least 50 people out there running, gunning. You're gonna be running here through the range. You're gonna be shooting a course of fire. You're gonna be running outside, lifting heavy stuff, running. Um, did I mention more running? There's gonna be a ton of, again, combat athleticism. This is really something that you've never seen done up here, okay? A lot of you shoot uh, USPSA, you shoot IPSC or three gun or whatever other styles of competition you do. This is completely different, all right? And it's something that this will certainly, training for this style of competition, will help you in any other avenue that you're gonna go down. It might help you in your job. If you're a law enforcement uh, officer out there, if you're um, in the military, you wanna just up your game, come out, start training for these, and we're super excited. That's gonna be November 1st, all right? So don't party too hard on Halloween, otherwise that's like hard mode of this competition, right? We are gonna have, though, prizes, and giveaways. This is going to be such a fun event. Even if you're not competing, this is gonna be a really fun experience for people to come down and just spectate. Again, we're really trying to just put firearms in a positive light. So any little thing that we can do to normalize firearms, like, oh yeah, there's a competition like that every week down at the firing pin or every month, whatever it ends up being. Uh, anything that we can do, get the news out here, just get some positive press. It's what we all need, as you guys know, in the Second Amendment community. Super excited about that. We've also got some training, uh, classroom style training coming up. September 26th is gonna be our next one. That's a Saturday. That's gonna be a pre-permit course, all right? So if you want to get your pistol permit, first of all, if you live in certain counties, you have to take a training course. So if you're in Genesee County, come down here, take this course on the 26th. It's $65 and it will cover everything that needs to be covered to get your uh, pistol permit here in New York. Now there are some counties, Monroe being one of them, where you don't need to take a training class. I still highly recommend taking a training class. Even if you've had firearms your entire life, handguns are different. The laws regarding handguns are different. 
and use of force while not different with a handgun, something that a lot of people don't get educated on, something that's extremely important, obviously, in New York, of all places. We've also got a USCCA class. Our next one's coming up on October 11th, all right? That's gonna be a Sunday, right? Pat? Correct. Right, so that's gonna be on a Sunday, and that class is 100 bucks, a lot longer. I shouldn't say a lot longer. The pre-permit class starts at 930, that's about a three hour course total, right? Maybe a little bit over that. The USCCA is more like a four and a half hour course, right, Pat? Like that's a full course. Um, that one's a little bit more as well, but you get a book valued at $30 with that course included in the price. So that one's 100. That will also count if you need to take a class for your county's permit, all right? So the USCCA class goes in a little bit more in depth in certain areas. Um, they're both excellent classes, just two different needs. The first one is kind of just that bare bones, you need this, we get it to you, uh, and, it, and it's good to go, right? So we've got both of those training opportunities coming up, and again, we're super excited about them. How's your week going, right? I hope, I hope you're doing well out there. Things, you know, I feel like we're all just on such short fuses nowadays. Even little things, man, I was, I was hooking up my trailer the other day, I got a, like a flat top car trailer, and it was just frustrating, and I was getting frustrated, and I like, I kicked it, I was just, that's not me. And I, I just had to like, you know, zen, like find my center and just recalibrate and just, you know, I think we're all just on really short fuses with, with everything going on, you know, it's just crazy. Um, and, and yeah, I think we all just need to chill. So I hope you're enjoying a nice beverage. I'm glad you're here uh, spending some time with us tonight. Um, yeah, Ty or Pat, what are we seeing in the comments? Everybody tell me to go away. Just find a job, go home. So far, everybody's just saying hello, greetings, awesome. you know, all of that nice stuff. So awesome. hopefully we'll get some more questions and things of that nature yeah, rolling please. in as we keep going. Please. So if you guys have any questions, you know, specific to the tactical game skirmish event coming up, obviously we're going to spend, you know, a good deal of time tonight talking about that because that's yes. pretty important. Yes. Um, and we also want to make sure that we're putting out some good uh, information to help some of you guys out, making the determination whether or not you're going to come out and participate in that event or whether or not you want to just volunteer and come and lend a hand so we'll talk about some yeah. of the uh some of the other opportunities associated with that event whether or not you intend to compete right yeah um and we'll talk about some of the rules and stuff like that but if you guys have any other questions you know as we go along you know how this game works right go ahead and hit tyler up and he'll communicate those to us yeah so i would say right off the bat if you're not sure what the tactical games is Plug that in online, look up some videos on YouTube. Sure. They're all a little different, and it's, excuse me, one of those things where we're not gonna really tell you what the event is until the day of the event, until you see it. Can't do it, know? right? Like, I, right. we can't start publishing some of those requirements, right? Because I don't want people to get a leg up on the competition right. out there, right? right. What, what we're hoping is gonna happen is you guys are just gonna say to yourselves, you know what, I've been putting in a lot of work on the physical side, I've been putting mm -hmm. in some work on the shooting side, and I just wanna go out and see if when those two things come together, that my physical ability is going to be uh, enough, right? If I'm going to have enough physical ability to uh, deliver myself, as Steve Falano is, is fond of saying, mm -hmm. deliver myself to that event in a condition that lends itself to being able to perform, right? right. So right. if your physical condition is is not great, um, obviously your shooting is going to deteriorate right. on some level, right? right. So um, we know that. Um, but if you've been putting the effort in, um, then your physical game should help your shooting game to, to stay solid. Right? Absolutely. And that was one of the things that I wanted to find out when I went to compete, right, was like I put a lot of work in on the shooting side of the house, right? You guys know that. I'm a SIG Master Pistol Instructor, Semi-Auto uh, Patrol Rifle Instructor, and all of that good no stuff. Big deal. Yeah, you know, I, so I <laughs> spend a lot of time teaching, right? And I spend a lot of time working on my own shooting, like, performance and stuff like that. Um, and then recently I've kind of gotten back into working out. You know, I'm kind of on like a five, six day a week kind mm -hmm. of. You really let yourself go. You were just. You were yeah, just I was strong. really ballooning just... out there. No, but you know, I had kind of like no, gotten know, in, you know, a little bit like relaxed sure. in that sense, right? Sure. For a while, I was kind of happy doing what I was doing, and uh, so I just let myself go a little bit. And as I was, you know, just living my life, I started to notice like, man, I'm not as strong as sure. I used to be. Sure. I'm not a. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm 37, so it takes a little bit more effort now for me to stay sure. at this kind of sure. level of performance, right? So 
um, you know, you'll have that problem. It's moving, many years moving down on the road. Into your 30s, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the future is now, old man. You know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, right off the bat, one of the things I'd like to address: we had a lot of people that are very interested in this event, but that's the thing they're not sure of: is if they can if they can meet those physical requirements, okay. right? Uh, so hopefully, what we'd like to do is maybe have some very informal. Um, training sessions, you know, out here, that might be a loose way to put it, right. but maybe put some people through, you know, something that you might be looking at, you know, uh, I would highly suggest joining our discord. Yeah. I'm sure Tyler can, can drop a link here in a minute. Um, there's a lot going on. Like if you really want to be more a part of the community here, you know, we try to engage as much as we can on Facebook. But if you join our Discord, like you will be a part of the community. Yeah, you know? there's some other stuff going on that you know not everybody is privy to, mm -hmm. right? There's mm -hmm. some information that we don't share as much with everyone, right? There's right? an awesome carving class that Pat is doing this Sunday, right? Like, hey, don't show this up. Coming it's, Sunday, it's yeah, full. No, it's way beyond. We full. we put right. it out in the Discord only, actually. Uh, and it filled up in like a heartbeat, right? So and fast. We like, could fill. We could probably fill another one just to people. In the I think we would be list. ready yeah. to get. If I yep. said, "Hey guys, we're gonna have another follow-on one two mm -hmm. weeks out," mm -hmm. nobody would bat an eye. They would sign up uh, and be ready to go, and that would be awesome. But I want to get this first one done first sure, because sure, I want sure. those folks to go out and be able to talk about mm -hmm. what, some of the stuff that we we did. And also to be able to kind of gauge whether or not those, you know, the stuff that we're going to be working on is going to be beneficial. Sure. To them. And I think that um, that's going to make that's going to drive demand higher as opposed to lower. Right? So a lot of times you put something like this out, and then it goes it goes off, and by the time it's over and done with, people are like, "Man, that wasn't what I thought it was sure. going to be. I, did, I sure. didn't feel like I got what I was coming to get." Believe me when I tell you, if you come to this, if you come to if you're coming to this class, you're gonna get your money's worth, right? And if you uh, are on the fence, wait until this class uh, is over and done with and see what people have to say sure. yeah. about this this training, right? Because yeah. I think it's gonna be great. I'm very excited about it. I've been working on this uh, rifle curriculum for a long time and I feel like it makes really good sense the way that we have mm -hmm. it structured and the layers of, of stuff, kind of like peeling an onion, right? Yep. There's always another layer underneath there and we're gonna keep peeling those layers back and uh, hopefully you guys are gonna learn something. Actually, I know you guys are gonna You will. 100%. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, 100%. Join our Discord if that's something that you're interested in, just becoming, again, more a part of our community here. That's where we release stuff the first place you see 100%. it. Uh, and that's, you know, like this carving class, you know, in a way where there are guinea pigs a little bit, you know, but they're getting an insane, uh, you know, training opportunity, basically. Sure. And we're, you know, everybody's helping everybody, mm -hmm. right? So same with this tactical games thing. Uh, if you would like to volunteer, that's where we're coordinating all of our volunteer staff, right? Uh, so you can either send us a message maybe on Facebook if you'd like to volunteer that day. We're going to need like 25 to maybe even 35 volunteers. Yeah, it's going to be um, up there. The numbers are going to be up there. For yeah, sure. for sure. Uh, but it's there's a there's a range of things you know we would love to have qualified and trained RSOs you mm -hmm. know range safety officers For sure. that's a that's a must but some of them are just literally you know every competitor needs to have a judge shadow them just to make sure like okay if you have to do ten push-ups I made sure you did ten push-ups I need to be able if to you visually have to, see right if you have to carry this to this line on the dirt you know let's make sure everything is everybody make sure it gets up to and, that yeah, right absolutely. so it's just it's just that verification that you know people are doing the things they're supposed to do uh and that everything is running smooth absolutely yeah so we're gonna need these volunteers so if that's something you're interested in um the offer i guess that we would make so there's two different ways you could take it what the tactical games normally does and we're going to do the same if you volunteer at this skirmish mm -hmm. you can come to another one within one year for free right oh, we're right. going to do a absolutely. lot of these right so you volunteer at one you can come to one Pretty straightforward. That's awesome. There are a lot of people, though, again, that they're not maybe interested or they're not maybe physically capable of doing the skirmish event, sure. right? The combat athletics. So what we're going to do is if you volunteer, you have your choice. You can come to one for free later, or you'll get two months of credit as a gold member wow. here. So we Pretty value good. that. That's 30 bucks a month. So you're getting 60 bucks, 60 bucks, you know, basically for one day of volunteering mm -hmm. and you'd be a gold member with all of its benefits, which are, are many, mm -hmm. including a discount on everything here in the store. Um, you'll be a, a gold member for two months. We expect to do these 
I would say at minimum every like two months like that. If there if there's interest, we're gonna do these every month, which I, I yeah. think there will be. If we know? can support it, we'll do them as often as yeah. we can, right? We want you guys. So to be out we get that core group of of people. You might you might donate one day, you know, a solid day, but one day every couple of months, and just be a perpetual gold member, you know, and use the range as much as you'd like, or uh, be able to compete in these, right? You know, yeah. pretty much as often as so, you like. Uh, that's what we're proposing. So if that's something that interests you, hit us up in the Discord, send us an email, send us a message, uh, and we'll get together. We'll get you trained up. There'll be certainly, you know, some training opportunities out here to get you up to speed. Um, you know, again, we can't really pay you for those, but we'll pay you in like pizza. That's how we normally run. There's going to be like rehearsals. Give you three nine millimeter rounds. <laughs> <laughs> One handful of bricks. Some bottle caps. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, tackle games. We're super excited for that. Just something that has not been done up here. And I, I really think it's something that people are craving up here. Cause you know, again, not to, um, slam any other type of competition. They all have their, their little quirks. And I think there's a lot of people that want to just, you know, I want to do drills that are athletic and the shooting is like practical, you know, because again, there are some, and this is why we don't publish the stage ahead of time. You really can't do a stage walkthrough, you know, again, I'm not trying to crap on them. I love it. It's any kind of competitive shooting is good, but you'll see like the USPSA or like the IPSA guys, like they will rehearse like where every step goes, like I'm going to do my reload here. Like I'm going to, you know, they plan their entire... Sure thing out and that's great with this you really you just can't do that you know you just have to be ready and run it the best you can and your time is what your time is and your shots are what your shots are you know um that's what i love on about. demand mm -hmm. right like yeah it's just you show up and execute yeah. either you can do it or you can't and it's pass fail yeah there is no like another thing i want to put out there about the tactical games so not only can you sign up to do the games but i'm sure you've seen a lot of the amazing photography we got of pat Man, if you want to have a cool desktop background, come to these and compete because we're going to have Phil Casper, uh, a great local photographer here. He's going to be doing like the combat photography like during yeah, this yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to be like in the mud with you, like doing whatever. Uh, and, and you can pay, uh, you know, an extra fee basically and get photos and you'll get a ton of them. Uh, specifically of you competing in the game. So that, that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, and then your picture, like mine, can be everywhere on all sorts yeah, of different you can stuff. Bragging, you know, when you get in an argument with your buddies, like, you know, Smith & Wesson or Ruger, be like, well, you know, armchair quarterback over here. Like, I go out and use my stuff. You know, <laughs> here, here I am. Here's how cool I am. Obviously, the only important thing in the gun industry is looking 100%. cool. Yeah. Looking cool looking is, cool. like, number one. Um, so what do you got here? I, well, I was going to say, uh, we'll talk about this. I feel like we should crack open that basement door and check on Tyler. Absolutely. Like, down there. Let's see like... how he's doing down there. Go kick his cage. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, guys? Um, I appreciate everybody for, you know, letting me know I'm doing really well with all of this. As wow. you see, I've had to make some rough edits to chat and stuff to make sure. We're finding out. You guys are my guinea pigs, and I appreciate you guys for bearing with us. Absolutely. Um, we're doing a giveaway. As we are. Course, right? We are. Uh, Wait, an MCX? Is that yeah, we're just MCX? giving away Tyler's <laughs> MCX. <laughs> Bite you. <laughs> uh, we have a little goodie bag. Uh, hunting season is coming up pretty soon. Uh, one of the things I want to point out in here that we have is this scent away. Like, some of you definitely need this. Um, <laughs> uh, that is one of the things in here. This is a little hunting bag and uh, cooler designed specifically for, you know, hunters. But if you're not a hunter, you'd still probably get some use out of some of the stuff in there. Um, how do you want to do, do giveaway today, as usual? Me yeah, that, that's kind of your thing, whatever, yeah, okay. whatever you I, like. I like remembering your name. I like remembering your little profile pictures. Now that I'm able to go on uh, Twitch, I am able to go on YouTube and Facebook all at the same time. It looks gorgeous. I can see you. Keep commenting. Um, I'm seeing you on a chat. It's a little different. I can't really react to all of your guys' stuff as I usually do. I do apologize for that, but I have a lot more of a, a range to see where you guys are commenting from, and I absolutely love it. Uh, as I said earlier in my Facebook post, uh, we have our website. We, I totally built a website for this live stream. It is literally the firing pin, LLC.com. Go to that. Uh, it's dedicated 100% to this. You can buy Barrett Brandon merch, Pew is Life merch. You can buy pretty much everything we talk about in stream um, as far as that's related to the store. Um, not guns. You can't buy guns. 
We'll figure that out. Oh. We'll, we'll get guns for sale. We'll, we'll get them. Somehow. We'll do it. Uh, but yeah, that is awesome. Uh, check out check out the website that I built for this. Um, I'm, I'm not, of course, not going to ask for donations, but there is a donations button if you do want to, you know, pitch into us. We will love you forever. That's really all I have, other than questions, which I'm going to turn back to you guys for questions. So, That's nice. Um, yeah. What What do we got? Got some questions already? Got a so far. Yeah. Love it. Uh, one of the one of the first questions I got is how difficult is it to build an AR? Well, that is a a um, a loaded question, mm-hmm. pun intended, right now for a couple different reasons. Um, the technical, like building an AR, super simple, right? Relatively, I yeah. would say, yeah. Compared to building other firearms, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, you re- you know you're really assembling an AR-15. Mm-hmm. Very very straightforward. The the tough part today is the practical aspect of finding sourcing parts. parts. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be the hard part. Um, there are certainly, you know, there used to be a lot more on YouTube. They've, I know, like banned and deleted a lot of the videos of like actually building an AR. But I'm sure there are plenty of other platforms like Full30. Um, there are, maybe are some hub websites that might have <laughs> these videos on there that allow, you know, that's where our other streams go. Um, we would certainly do a class. We've done them before. Oh, absolutely. If you, you know, if you have all the parts you need or most of the parts or whatever you think you need, um, you could sit down with Pat or John, right? Either one of them. Yeah, John's great. Um, that stuff. I'd, I'd they'll, do it too. They'll sit down uh, and, and build your AR-15 like right alongside with you. Like they'll, they'll just book like a private lesson. That's, you know, just to let people know, like our private lessons, they're really, you know, your time. You just tell us what you want to work on. And that's what we work on, you right. know. And, and if you know, if we're getting in there and and you know that side of it, just tell us, and we'll skip it or we'll gloss over it, you know. So certainly, if it if it's something uh, like a lot of things, until you've done it once, it can be quite intimidating. And it seems to be hard. It's at it's, first, not, it's not, you know, I, um, you know, say like like building a computer. It's probably as hard as building a computer, sourcing the parts, assembling them, right? I guess like what's the worst that could happen building a computer and i guess it could blow up you could die but you know you get electrocuted so you know maybe it's a similar thing you know a gun is relatively i don't want to say dangerous but you know what i mean there is danger inherent in firearms training there is danger inherent in building firearms and shooting them the only other thing i would say is it is much more difficult and again it's not difficult it's going to require more specialty tools if you're going to assemble an upper right so if you just buy an upper and then build a lower like almost all of us with just the tools we have in our garage could could accomplish that, you know. There are tools that make it easier, of course, with some of those retaining pins and, and uh, detents and for things. Sure, but for sure. um, yeah, if you're building an upper, that's a little bit more involved because now you're gonna need, you know, torque wrenches and and you know no go gauges. You're gonna have you know a, cu- a couple hundred bucks, I would say, in specialty tools. But once you have them, you have them. They're, nice. they're yours forever, right? Yeah. So I, I do want to expand out a little bit on what Brandon was saying because he's absolutely correct, right? Um, generally speaking, it's a pretty easy procedure. Couple considerations to keep in mind. A lot of the threads, right? We're talking about mating, receiver extensions into receivers with end plates and castle nuts and things of that nature. So some of those parts are going to be aluminum. Some of those parts are going to be steel. Right? So we're going to want to make sure we have proper thread treatments going on to anything where we're meeting aluminum and steel together. Sure. Otherwise, those parts are going to start to gall. There's going to be a reaction, sure. and those things could seize up on you. Right? Uh, another consideration, torque specs. Right? Not everything on the AR-15 has a specific torque spec associated with it, like your bird cage, right? If a bird cage is on there and it's timed correctly, it's as long as it's torqued on there correctly and there's a crush washer, you're in great shape, right? Some of your other muzzle devices might have a little bit more specific uh, specifications from the manufacturer in terms of torque specs or timing or mm-hmm. things of that nature, mm-hmm. and again, thread treatments, right? And in particular, if you're gonna use like rock set and you're gonna start to sure. to permanently attach a yep. war comp or something yep. of that nature, so just right? just gonna say like a surefire or something. Right, like in that. that sense, right? Um, thread treatments are gonna matter a great deal because that rock set is gonna make sure that everything is timed up like forever, right? So that's um, pretty important. Um, another key consideration is um, the barrel nut wrench, right? Like some of your barrel nuts Mm -hmm. are just like a mil spec pattern. They're not necessarily a mil spec nut, but they have a mil spec pattern and they'll fit the mil spec wrench, right? right? Some of your barrel nuts are gonna require a special tool and 
I hate to break it to you guys, not all manufacturers, for whatever reason, not all manufacturers include with their handguard right. the specific yeah. tool that you need to torque their stinking barrel nuts on. So understand that sometimes you're going to get a handguard, you're going to look at the barrel nut and you're going to go, hmm, what is <laughs> yeah. this and how am I going to torque this monkey on there? Yeah. And then you're going to figure out that you need some other sort of tool and you're going to sure. need a torque wrench and you're going to need like white lithium grease right or something mm -hmm. else to, to treat the threads so understand that while there's not a ton to know on the technical side torque values matter on a lot sure. of that stuff sure appropriately aligning and placing your gas block matters knurled headset screws dimpled gas blocks um you know proper uh, alignment of your tube and your block. I'm not sure. going to say any names. Had a guy come in here from another place that he had been where they put a gun together for him, helped him put a gun together, whatever the case was. He came in here, his gas tube was 180 out, right? So he's in there with a gun that won't cycle yeah. and he's coming to me saying, hey man, why isn't my bolt locking to the rear? I get out there, I fired one round through the gun, the bolt is still locked closed. And I was like, there is no gas going yeah, into this gun. Yeah, none at all. Like, a single shot. Zero gas. There safe back legal. No yeah, <laughs> safe back compliant because it's a straight pulled bolt gun at this point, right? So I had to take his, his gas tube, or I took his gas block off first to make sure that there was nothing going on with like the alignment of the block sure. and the port and all that stuff. Didn't even check the alignment of the tube at that point, just checked the block itself. Went back out, fired one more single round. I said, I bet you this gas <laughs> tube is 180 out. Took it back onto the bench again, tapped the, the roll pin out. Sure as you're born, the gas tube is 180 out and there's a nice little burn mark from all the gas on the reverse side of his tube. Yeah. So I realigned his tube, took the gun back out there. After I put everything back together, bang, bang, bang. Nice. Here's your stuff. We're good to go. Yeah. Right? So there, there is stuff to know. Sure. Um, and if you don't know, if you don't know what you don't know. Right. Right? So up and until you get that gun out on the range to do your test fire, you may or may not know whether or not it's done correctly. Um, so, you know. Yeah. Nice. Tom, we got any other questions? I, I saw you writing down there. Yeah, I've got a few. Um, this one, we're getting some gunsmithing questions. I like this. All right, okay, all right. absolutely. Rust. Uh, is rust bad for firearms? And I'm going to kind of go a little further. How do we clean rust off of a firearm? Sure. Okay, so first let's go with is rust bad? Brandon, what is bluing? Bluing is rust. So, yeah. so is all rust these bad? guns are rusting right now is is rust bad yes and no yeah right controlled rusting that results in a nice blued finish good to go sure surface rust not necessarily bad but it indicates that we need to protect right. the finish of the gun a little bit better right um as far as removing that stuff how do we do it oil mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and a little bit of friction with something softer than the finish of the gun mm -hmm. i.e a nylon brush maybe even some sort of uh copper bristled brush sure if we're comfortable with that right depending on the finish of the gun and all of that good stuff mm -hmm. um but yeah just a little bit of friction and a little bit of oil generally that's going to take little, that stuff off uh four aught like steel wool with like no pressure yeah de all, depending, depending on, on the gun is, right like yeah. on this specific trench gun i don't know if i'm going that far sure Start, definitely start with the oil. I'm first, definitely going to you know, start with yeah. something nylon, right? Yep. And a little bit of cloth, right? I personally like my guns to have that nice touch of fallout rust. Just a little bit, you know? Just a little hint. Looks like something from there. Fallout 4, okay. just sitting there. Yeah, I love it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding, of course. Um, yeah, so you asked me about this earlier. Perfect time, little segue. We'll take a little break from some questions, but we'll get right back to them. A uh, little story about this shotgun. So, this is one of my personal shotguns um, that I've had for quite a while. I would have bought this probably. 2009, uh, maybe 2010. I used to work at Gander Mountain in Henrietta. A lot of you know me from there. Uh, I was just a college kid working the gun counter. Had no business being there, but uh, you know. But there you were. I was there, <laughs> yeah, selling all you guns. And um, you know, obviously, just like with here, you kind of get first dibs on whatever comes in, so you know. Sure. So this shotgun came in. This is a Winchester 1897. Okay, one of the most classic. Uh, you know, this is the the basis for the trench gun from World War One, and uh, tons of uh, riot guns were, were either made from these or patterned off of this style. Um, but yeah, this guy, when it came in, it had a 30 inch barrel that at some point, some, some old timer had wanted to keep the choke. So it was a, it's a fixed choke. 
which means like the, the last cut, like two or three inches of the, the barrel itself were, were choked Just down. Like modified cylinder. Yeah, whatever it was. Whatever. Actually, it was a full because oh, it's still full, marked. Okay. Same barrel. So it used to have been like a 30 or a 32 inch barrel. Someone had cut it down and then saved and used like almost some type of like plumbing fixture in a way. Mm -hmm. So they lobbed it down to like a 26 inch barrel, but they kept that muzzle and, and it just and looked, just had like this weird it ring on it. on it. Yeah, yeah and it yeah. was just weird, right? Uh, 200 bucks. And I was like, okay, the bluing was completely trashed. The wood was really crappy. Um, and I was like, all right, I had to have it. You know, it was one of those, it's great when, you know, you know how it is when you're a young man, like if, if you get a paycheck and that paycheck is for 200 bucks, you spend every penny oh, of it. Sure. Like, oh, I'm the richest man. I can buy something for $200. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 So I did that and uh, I took it home and I knew right away I wanted to just change it up, make it, make it, you know, cooler. Right. So I started with the wood and just very amateurishly, I took the wood off and I sanded it down and I just put a linseed oil you know, finish, which which actually made it look quite nice. I think it looks really beautiful. I do with like that, that linseed oil hand rub finish, yeah. Plain, right? Yeah, with that corn cob end. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so working at Gander, at that time anyways, Gander in Wisconsin at like their home office, mm -hmm. they had a full, like huge professional gunsmithing shop. And you could send them like, I want to have this blued. I want to have this um, parkerized. I want to have it done, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had our gunsmith at the time, chopped the barrel down to 20 inches, right? So this is a 20 inch barrel. And then I had it parkerized, yeah, yeah. Gander Mountain parkerized it for me. And now I basically got, you know, a little 20 inch uh, riot gun, you know? So this is one of my absolute favorite uh, shotguns. I just love that, that sound, right? Cause it's cocking that hammer there all at once. And uh, as those of you that know me well, if there's, there's, you know, riot shotguns I love, I love lever action guns. And if there's a crossover in between that I love, they are takedowns. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is a takedown, and it's been so long, right? There you go. So this is a takedown shotgun. And you know, when I was again in my late college years, my early 20s, I would like take this out backpacking, just throw it in the pack like this, get to For camp, sure. you got your rounds open in the tube, it up. You're good yeah, to go. good to go. Whatever. So fast, um, and yeah, just utterly reliable. You know, this shotgun. Obviously, I did it wrong there. Uh, live, you always mess up live. For sure. You know? That's when you're gonna mess up. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave this over here before I embarrass myself some more. We'll fix that later. But uh, yeah, I would take that. I've, I've that gun will slam fire, right? Yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. just hold the trigger down and work the pump. And as soon as the pump gets all the way forward again, it'll shoot. So that gun, who knows what they did to that gun before I got it. And I have just shot tens of thousands of rounds of, of 12 gauge, you know, bird shot, buck shot through it. And uh, yeah, that's this week's this old gun. That would make a cool <laughs> trunk gun. It would. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've, I've wanted to go to like a single action shooting, the sass, the cowboy stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, Cause they do like a wild bunch competition and that, that like that's the like that gun. Yeah. And like there, that right? and the 1911. Yeah. 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 So Super cool. Uh, cool. Ty, what else we got uh, over there as you scribble furiously? I'm scribbling hard. <laughs> so hard. So hard. Let's um, see if I can fix this stupid thing. So. Guns are so dumb. Uh, Keep chats up, comments, and everything's going well. YouTube's actually doing surprisingly well. Amazing. Um, nice. well, but we never get YouTube chat, and I well, like that. Awesome. Um, Keep it I coming, guys. I have a lot of Discord questions. So Discord is a essentially like a chat service. Uh, we started our Discord server up uh, probably around March, February, March. And Discord's awesome. We use it a lot. That's one way outside of like Facebook and stuff where you as customers um, can hit us up and it's kind of like a community, uh, if you will. It's, it's just a server. Um, it's sort of like a WhatsApp type idea. Right? Kind of, yeah, that's kind of. Um, it's a messaging service. Uh, so the, if you look, let me see, it's like right over here um, at that bottom, bottom corner, there's that little like M thing, that's, that's Discord, that's the logo for Discord. Um, it says the firing pin LLC and then pound 5449. That is the store's Discord name. It is very cap sensitive, so make sure you're doing that to a like the capitalization. Add the store, we'll add you back. Um, you don't need to add the store to be in our Discord. I actually, on my personal account, just sent everybody the invite link. So on your smartphones or whatever, uh, on Facebook, click that link. Uh, so that is how we do. Um, it's not a thing that I do. 
but one of the things that we really want to make sure we're, we're getting compliance for guns and things of that nature. So that's the first thing that I want to hit on. In terms of safe act compliance and, and fixed magazines and all of that stuff, understand guys that there are two separate types of each other. Uh, the first are going to be the physical challenges. From there, um, once the physical challenge is arranged, and you're going to then load and make ripe course of fire, we're not going to require you guys as part of these stages, as part of these battles, we're not going to require you guys to be executing any emergency reloads. Then you're not going to have to reload the gun unless and until pistol specific um, core. However, we don't have fixed magazines and handguns, so that should be a non-issue for everybody, okay? in terms of something that is rifle and pistol combined, because there's gonna be one stage, again, I don't wanna give away all of the, the specifics here, there's gonna be one stage that's right, because we recognize that ammunition is relatively short, is causing us to, um, where we had to lower the round counts in some of the rifle events, because you guys in the majority are not gonna have um, detachable magazines, you're not gonna have the ability to, to um, we're gonna make those, we're gonna make those uh, state regulation. So I hope that that clarifies a lot of this stuff for you guys. And I hope that we've laid some minds to rest in terms of whether or not your fixed magazine gun is going to be um, good enough to compete or, or ready to compete. Um, in terms of what could be some issues, some being without a detachable floor plate in your gun. If you, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get the bolt lock to magazine from the gun. And that next round is Dictates us to go ahead and take the floor plate off eventually to clear that gun out. So, um, metal magazines, probably not. Um, Lancer Advanced magazines, these are all examples of polymer those malfunctions as they may occur. Um, um, if you can look inside a bolt carrier group, you are wrong because now you are running the risk of inducing a malfunction due to improper to get that stand that. Um, Proper cleanliness ones are, are fully functioning and operation. I require that if you have some sort of an optical side of backup iron sight option as well. If you're running a low power variable optic or a traditional magnified optic, you are going to need to have those uh, iron sights in a uh, 40 for tactical games proper, like big T, big G um, events that go on for, for two days. Not these skirmish type events, but the uh, the bigger picture stuff, right? So understand that all of the rules that we're putting in place here, we're putting them in place specifically to mirror and emulate those bigger of ammunition. That's another reason why 300 Blackout, 762, 6.5 Grendel, etc., are not going to be allowed um, in terms of calibers, right? If you're shooting a traditional AR-15 pattern rifle, you're going to be shooting that traditional AR-15 pattern rifle in 5.56 NATO or 223 or you're going to have to compete in uh, some other event right because for our events we're, um, anything of that nature yeah it might not be the same the same rifle platform but in terms of caliber it, it'll meet the requirements there um, as long as it's semi-automatic guys type magazines or 5.56 ammunition or two for you to find you're going to be good to go all right red dots now this is not our rule this is again the tactical games people's rule on your handguns. You have to um, remove those things now. Um, they don't have any plans to, to change the rules. They've been really resistant. They get a lot of questions about that all the time. And all of the correspondence that I've seen up to now has stated very specifically they have no plans to change that anytime in the near future. So um, we all know that red dots on pistols are the future. And for right now, they're going to stay in the future because um, they are not the present for this event. Nice. So, um, so Pat, we were just looking at some of the questions. Like, what what makes a carbine different from other rifles? From um, back in the day when cavalry guys, right, riding on horseback, were they needed a rifle that was set up specifically for them, right? They needed a rifle with a short barrel and generally a shorter length of pull gotcha. that is designed specifically to be used uh, by initially by those cavalry type dudes. And nowadays we look at uh, a carbine as like an M4 sure. pattern rifle as opposed sure. to like an M16 pattern rifle, right? Sure. With a fixed stop refers all, to. All carbines are rifles. By but definition. Not all yes. rifles are carbines. Absolutely. Super simple. Perfect. Super simple. It doesn't matter. That is what it is. If you call any, say, hey, grab my carbine, I would know what you're talking about. I would, I would 100% yeah. know. I might, I might look at your rifle and be like, this is. Very heavy carbine. carbine, but yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, we'll know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. 
Great question. A few of these gunsmithing schools, which I, that will always be around mm -hmm. and is always going to be in demand. And it, it seems like most of the people that do it are older, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's just one of those kind of a dying art. It almost, really is. Stay away from any online or through the mail type of program. I haven't tried them all. I don't. I never like to, you know, shit on different products that I have never tried. You know, it's it's one thing if you already know a lot and you're working towards being a gunsmith, you might get a diagram or a technical data package for one particular gun. You know, like that 1897, that's a that, but yeah, to really like to try to learn gunsmithing. Here for one second. Sure. So I actually it's too, right? So that'd probably be the one I would say that's legit. So they, they run a legitimate good. Yeah, um, it's it's accredited, right? right and right, it's right, right. it's very it's very good training but here's the deal um i'm out of check ring sure. and i had to take photographs sure. of the check ring and i had to show that like everything is lined up and it's this pattern yeah. and i can i can articulate what's going on here on the wrist of the gun and all of that your gun in here your 1911 and be able to cut <laughs> yeah. 30 line per inch check ring on the back strap sure. of your gun into that metal right i also have like a working knowledge about gun stock repair and um breaking down all different types of firearms. They give you so many different books sure. and, and digital resources of exposing you to some of these ideas. Yeah. You don't actually have any real experience to fall back on. Sure. You can look at you know, diagrams and exploded parts stuff. Sure. And I can identify what tools that I might need to get in school, guns and, and stuff out yeah. there, right? That even though I have like a, an associate's degree, it really is, is, is that's right. a good if point. you're just looking to get your foot into the door, it escapes me right now, yep. but it is a proper, and you go there and you live, it's a resident course. We went to that uh, NSSF conference in Denver. Yeah, there's a Colorado, Colorado school. Colorado, well. like, yeah, Colorado yeah. School of Trades mm -hmm. or something like that. Absolutely. They had a, what seemed like a fantastic program. Yeah. Uh, and another, you know, another route could be, like I said before, to really like apprentice yeah, uh, right, under someone. One of the best gunsmiths um, that I know, I haven't met him in person, but we've corresponded, we've talked on the phone quite a bit, Anvil Gunsmithing. Uh, he's the one, we were actually very proud of this, probably, well, probably over a year ago by now, we shared a video of a very interesting shotgun mm -hmm. that was on Iraq Veteran 8888's channel. Okay. Uh, yeah. It hangs up here on the wall, you've seen it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a traveling shotgun, it's to have him repair it. And when I, when Eric from, they sent me this video like, hey, like I had no idea they were gonna do that. I just sent this firearm to him for repair. And then he fires back, he's like, hey, you ever heard of this small little YouTube channel? Like, you know, who's not heard of him? Right, and, that's pretty cool. Uh, super cool, so uh, Mark, Mr. No, he was an, he, well, first of all, he was in the Navy for mm -hmm. a long time. And then he was an elevator repair man. No kidding. And then he became a gunsmith at like the age of 40. An artisan, really, in a lot of ways. Right. That's him, mm -hmm. you know. So you can't just pop on Numerich and order one of those. So that's that's the level of true like gunsmithing he would love like, out of steel. So like yeah, if you want to watch some some incredible like true gunsmithing, go watch his channel Anvil Gunsmithing. Um, he's just no nonsense on guns like Lewis machine guns from World War One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are guns that no one takes apart and no one touches, and he'll be over there like knocking it out, you know, like hit, you know, like seen in his videos he'll take on apprentices and uh, you know really put their name on the work and be proud of it he's certainly not cheap um i've had several firearms repaired from him uh and and he definitely charges what he's worth sure uh, but it's, it's incredible right in the beginning but actually now that i think about it maybe you should is what it's going to take to go down this colorado trade school like that's a huge undertaking so one of the neat benefits of doing the sonoran desert institute thing that that i got out of it when mm -hmm. i initially the or, original like driver of paid uh not only was i the course covered right but i was also a full correspondence so i was getting paid my bah to like learn my culmination project like my the last course that i had to take was the AR-15 Advanced Armor module, um, you know, 80% to 100%. I had to fully assemble the rifle mm -hmm. after that was done. And then I had to actually like video myself doing will cycle 
and it will will sure. fire ammunition. And cool. then I had an AR-15 that I had literally machined myself. <laughs> right? it, is, it is not particularly well. I did it with a jig yeah. and a plunger. The gun I'm control like, will oh. never work. Right. Like that's take it into a semi-automatic rifle. There is no way you're ever going <laughs> to keep people from arming themselves. Right. Because right? oh, I can make not not just one of those. I could probably make one of those slam fire shots. Nice. That would be cool. And oh man. Um. You want to a Ludi? I think it's L U. You know, obviously the Brits have had gun control, like homebrew submachine guns in his house. Like just sell the guns themselves. It would go out like into fields in the middle of the night and just test them. You know. Oh yeah. And uh, finally got busted, of course, and right. is probably still rotting in jail somewhere for just making machine parts. You know. With a surprisingly uh, few and sure. commonly available. Yeah. Um, yeah, like a submachine gun, way easier to make. Like, yeah, fully automatic stuff is actually surprisingly easy to produce. Fun for the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we would ever engage in such activity. This is a great first Repeal the NFA. Twitch. What's that? Twitch has to be loving us for this. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get banned for sure. <laughs> That's all right. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, we're all already on watch list, so yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Good as it. Uh, they they probably don't like what they see. Well. Um, they're still paying for the bandwidth. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. someone is. Talk about green light in the chat. That's fun. That'd be nice. <laughs> we need. That'd be cool. Light. They can't be you mad. Go. You know, just to hack the main, just hack the mainframe or whatever. Now here, as long as you call eight one one before you. Do That'll it. be fine. Yeah. You're good to go. I'll be fine. You know how distracted they are right now. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Any more questions? I got a couple questions. Uh, I don't know which one I want to ask first. Um, Pat, pick a number between one and two. <laughs> Two? Okay. Uh, how do ma how do rifle mag changes work at the tech games? So in this specific event, I, I felt like I just kind of covered this, but in this specific event, you're not going to have to change your magazine, right? right? There will be no emergency reloads required whatsoever. Once your rifle goes to bolt lock, um, you know, your time, am I, are we going to force any emergency reloads for this? Yep. You can, right? Because the, the ultimate end goal here, I'll tell you guys what it is. The end goal is that all of you guys will be running uh, our our lower reality, right? And we're just gonna give you guys some really, and you guys will be able to run, you know, like all the different, I have for your daughter. Shut you up, no, I didn't. I only went to the con once. Do like a, a Lucky Charm <laughs> Santa coat, like. Yeah. Oh man. Tactical games. Like one of the things that I'm trying to push, again, it's one of those things like the tactical games has existed for a while now. And they're their own thing. And right, they're very, right. like with everything, they're very protective of it. And they want For sure. the tactical games to be what they want the tactical games to be. And that's and only fair. Like that, just being behind enemy lines, you know. And, and maybe, like, because one of the comments that we got, you know, AR-15s. I mean, you could use a Mini-14. Yeah. Standard firearms. Pro, I'd love to have someone come out and, like, rock a Tavor or that would be, that, that would be, be pretty cool. That'd be cool. Um, but, you know, he was like, well, it would be cool if someone could run, like, a Garand you know, or a gun or whatever. So I am working on us to, to participate in right. well. So we are working to try to open up a, a different, you know, it might be an account, I guess, fun time, you know, but you might not get placed on the leaderboard. There it's like, hey, you guys come out and we're, it's not like it's fun. Here's the course. But yeah, know, we can yeah. set something up where it's like, shoot some targets. Do whatever. And then, yeah. We'll, yeah, right, and we'll just, and so we can incorporate some of the little game. Sure, um, sure. You know, we we want to facilitate stuff for you guys as well, but please try to be patient. Understand that right now, we're just trying to roll out something brand new that sure. nobody's ever seen sure. before. Plus a little bit more leeway to grow some sure. of these things out and do yeah. more. So, you know, if you can't participate in this one, try not to let that, obviously we're very open right to that kind of stuff as well so we we want to make sure that everybody can come out and and hang and participate and train marty like building the cowboy you know one oh that would be so <laughs> <laughs> move the bale of straw whatever yeah, yeah yeah i can see it i can see it but yeah it's definitely you know we we can, we can always run courses whatever we want we can do fun. whatever we yeah. want so if, if especially once some, polar wave gets up and running for sure yeah. yeah so if you guys have like a group of friends that wants to get involved in something like that I tell you what, if we could run in this yes. kind of way, right? Absolutely. We've come up with some ways that we can we can help you get involved in this. I saw some people were asking about like guns that we have. Self-defense firearms that we have in stock. This is a Weatherby, all right? And it goes for uh, six and a half, 649, 99 plus tax, uh, five round tube, 
Good to go. Removable on. Obviously, it's long as a handgun would be. Yeah, 20 on a semi-auto shotgun. If you're looking for a shotgun, Pat, you want to show them that uh, Troy <laughs> that we have? So this gun came in on consignment today, and I re got a bolt release underneath here, uh, just like a tradition. So instead of being, uh, you know, gas operated or any sort of semi-auto, we have the detachable magazine, and we have our pistol grip, right? And we have an adjustable stock happening here. You this can is run in a vertical grip. You yeah, you have, could yeah, run whatever. You muzzle want. device on it, yeah. Right? A glass breaker type of tip on there or whatever. It's got a press trigger. I can pump the shotgun and I can be, or shotgun. <laughs> I can pump the rifle and I can be ready to fire that thing as soon as my sights are back on that target. That uh, comes with some ammo. Then two AR 10 pattern mags. So these are not like AICS, American, or Accuracy International. Uh, pattern magazines or anything like that. These are like standard. Eighty dollars a piece. Right. Yeah, yeah. These are just standard uh, AR-10 mags, and um, this rifle is pretty doggone cool. And for just very hard to find uh, in the 308 version. Seen or handled one in 308. And um, Caltech, you love them or you hate them. I love their innovation. I wish maybe some of their quality was like five percent better. It's not bad. Yeah. But it could be, but you know, someone suggested the other day that if Caltech and Ruger merged, like Caltech's ingenuity with Ruger's reliability and just their like robustness, like if that was made by Ruger, could you just admit, you know what I mean? Like if Ruger absorbed them and just used their creativity, put out cool shit. I, I think you know? that that could be a, a match made in heaven unless and until. Those are... Oh man. But yeah, this is a New York, not by cool sign. Uh, if you've never seen one of these pack rifle, again a nice like backpack type. Oh, gun gorgeous! Or... The only guns just like the. Uh, you're out hiking in the woods. You don't want to set your. I believe this guy has adjustable gas as well. You came in like kind of, you know, obviously budget's always an option, but like if I could pick any rifle like that we could sell here, it'd be that one. All and way. not for nothing, but um, I I think I would have to check the rules to be certain. But I think this would probably fall within the rules of what you could run at the tactical game. Yeah, I don't see why I wouldn't. I, I think. Standard AR-15 mags. Um, I believe that will take standard yeah. mags. As a matter of fact, let's try that. Storage right. for two magazines in the stock, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, that'll be gone probably like 9:15. These, yeah. So, don't try us. Uh, Ty, any other comments, oh, yeah. questions, yeah. concerns? Yeah. Look mags all day. Oh. You guys, test ammunition. This is an earlier question. I'm now getting to. I apologize. Sure. So I know Pat's going to have, um, you know, his methods. Handguns to me, you know, especially if we're talking, you know, you could for sure accuracy test the handguns, but they're all going to be so close. To me, it's all about reliability. So as long as you're getting good quality jacketed hollow points from a reliable manufacturer and they work in your gun, that's what I would test. You yeah, know? I don't I'm worry about, I'm going to bring that for yeah. as far as like defensive ammo guys. I'm not out. Check out my sights. Do I have some relative idea of what I'm looking at versus right. where that bullet is going to end up, right? As long as we can meet that requirement, from there, it's just like, hey, I need about two sure that my gun is going to feed it, right? Make sure that it's going to extract right. it. Make sure that it's going to eject right. it. Make sure that there is no issue with ink coming out of there, right? So I just want to make sure that sort of magazine that I'm able to fire the gun to slide lock without worry so much about weight and stuff like that and in, in my emergency reload magazine right now 15 grain ammo my primary magazine that's in the gun right now i'm running 147 hollow tips sure so i'm running yeah. some lighter stuff in my emergency reload hopefully i don't need to fire my gun until i get to that emergency reload right right but if i do then i have and um i want something you know i like to have some bar tech XP xpd is awesome nuts nuts either those are you know, HSTs, you know. So the, consistent. Yeah. When I when I shot the TAC XPD ammunition into the gel, I pulled out all of those hollow points and every single one was just identical to the Beautiful. one before, right? Yeah. Beautiful. Just they're so well made, so well engineered. If you guys can find that Barnes TAC XPD ammunition, um, it's all material out yeah. of that hollow point, right? Not Five feet per second or something out of a four inch barrel, just screaming. Yeah. Hey, is to just try to buy a wide range, you know, that I've heard good things about. I run defensive shooting. You know, if you are talking bullseye, I would get several different brands, Weights different and manufacturers. Stuff like that. Yeah, one fister and zero zero two is gonna like federal, and it's just unique <laughs> and special, right? Um, uh, and last, what ammunition is gonna deliver those? When somebody comes in and they say, "Hey, do you recommend this load of information that's already out there?" I haven't conducted that testing myself. Right. 
right? But they're conducting, one of the things I like about the FBI standard testing is it's the same. It's right. uniform. Right. It's always done. I'm sorry. Gelatin covered by four layers of fabric. It's yep. then whatever the ammunition performance is, it's right there it in front of you, right? It just is what it is. Um, science. As distant as we can. And then what I'm looking for, uh, same general rule of thumb as the FBI, more than 12 inches of penetration, double in diameter between an unexpanded bullet. Uh, maintain the relationship between the jet. Golden Saber is notorious mm -hmm. for like an energy in a target. I need the core and the, the jet. Ruger on Ruger ARX polymer uh, rounds. Ruger ARX. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Those, the, 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 like the bullet itself is like that compressed. It's like a brown. Um, maybe you can pull it up. It looks like I haven't a, even seen it. Almost yet. looks like a Phillips head screw. Just, oh, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. now I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It was a cool idea, I guess. You know, I love innovation. Maybe not in like a weird, like yeah, weird like uh, yaw pattern mm -hmm. inside of it because it's got that Phillips head screw type yep. pattern on the outside. Yep. So yeah, but something that's through a barrier, sure. i.e. windshield glass or something like that, yep. that bullet is going to start tumbling before it reaches my target, yeah, gonna... and now I have no idea where it's going, it's go. right? So traditional ammunition is best in that regard because it's tested and proven. I think the point of that stuff too was like weight reduction, and now it's not a, it's a lead-free bullet, right? you know? So there was a few things, it's, you know, I don't know what they actually made it out of, but maybe it's more renewable or whatever. There were some distinct advantages to that. I like the know? idea, right? Um, but what I really yeah. want is a bullet that's going to behave predictably right. when I'm shooting through um, barriers too, guys. Because right. remember, not everything that needs to be shot is something that is is exposed to me, right? So sometimes I'm going to have to shoot through something to get to something that's behind it. Sure. I.e., again, windshield glass, etc. Um, and I just want bullets that are going to behave predictably so that I know what's going to happen on that backside. Cool stuff though. Cool yeah. stuff. It's cool that a company can like make that. Yeah, know, no, I'm, I'm all about it. innovation and I, I want yeah. to see more people coming out with cool new stuff. Um, I just don't want to be trying someday, to use it to save my you know, life. Right? Same with like that civil defense, the Liberty, whatever it was, that yeah. demo. That was like 90 so or, light yeah, yeah it was like all grain, aluminum or whatever bullet. it was yeah like just and i looked at like the penetration numbers on that stuff and i'm like it's going like four inches in right to, to bear gel like what do you think is going to happen when it hits me in the ribs Ow. Right, right. <laughs> i'm sure it's more than that but <laughs> yeah like do you think it's going to break my ribs and, oh, and get in all these pipes and pumps that are behind there maybe i don't know i'm not trying that that stuff was light though. I remember the first shot show. Yeah, super like fast. They had a yeah. normal weighted magazine and then this stuff. And it's like it's like an empty magazine. You don't even notice it. You know what yeah. I'm more interested in, honestly, is the seismic ammunition. The like 165, 180 grain 9 millimeter. Okay. I don't think and I've they seen have, that. Like, yeah, it's, called, it's from a company called Seismic. I tried funny. to get them to send some to me back when I was with PS and Ed before mm -hmm. I came over here. And... Um, I don't know whatever happened over there because I'm not over there anymore. So maybe they got it and they just, you know, didn't know where it came from sure. or whatever. But <laughs> what's this stuff? Yeah, seismic. I don't know anything about that. Throw it out. What do we got, Ty? How are we doing? Um, doing well. Slow. People need to start asking more questions. That's fine. Well, hey, we can get out of here a little bit early if we need to. It's my boy Sean James's birthday. Hey, Sean. Oh, no, really? Well, yeah, Sean is 16. We should be with your son on his birthday. I haven't been to my son all day on his birthday so far, but it's still his birthday. He'll see. He'll see me. Don't worry. He's seen me. The, he saw me this morning. I mean, he has next year. <laughs> He's good to go. <laughs> the kid has had multiple birthdays where I didn't get to be there. He'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's another one, Sean? I think you may have had better excuses for those ones, though. Like <laughs> no. Protecting America, you know. I specifically told yeah. the the fam today, like I could I could just skip out on the stream, and April was like, no, you have to be there. Cause you know people expect to see you on the show. He's a teenager too, so he's like, yeah. Like, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't yeah. care from home. Right? He's like way too cool for me, right? Sean's playing his guitar right now, not thinking about so much about angst. That. Yeah. <laughs> he's brooding right now. Uh. He's an angsty teen. Sean's a good kid. He's a great kid. Um, I I like how the questions have turned from, hey, when do you think you're gonna be able to get this to like. What do you predict on the ammo shortage? Oh, uh, man. What do you think for the winter? What about next year? Let me get out my what crystal about ball for all right fast. Going it's no, nothing going to improve between now and the election, guys. I, yeah. I, hate to, I hate to tell you, if anything, ammunition is going to become more scarce because 
politically, we're going to keep experiencing more of the same, right? We're going to keep experiencing more news cycles that are designed to inspire fear in people. We're going to keep seeing more and more people deciding to arm themselves suddenly because of some knee-jerk reaction to some perception of that they're in more danger. Right. There's going to be... Um, more and more of this like is this the next civil war kind of talk Crazy. and yeah. people are going to keep like blowing that up to whatever degree they can to drive again fear and confusion and division and also to continue to drive people to go out and panic buy things like sure. firearms and ammunition and all sure. that stuff right so yeah. um unfortunately guys i don't think that this is going to improve between now and at least the election and i think no matter which way the election goes, things are probably going to take a negative turn between right. November and right. right. No matter which way, at goes. least through the yeah. inauguration, right? And who knows if we're even going to have reliable, accurate election result? Like God forbid we have to go mail-in voting and we don't know who was elected president for two weeks. This whole country is going to be on fire. It's going to be crazy. So, I think it's the perfect time to just completely get rid of the two-party system and and most of it in general. You know, there's a great um, how-to book called, what was that called? Fight Club, I think. There was like, there was this book where at the end they like destroyed all destroyed of society. Right, yeah, I yeah. think that's what we should do. Or, you know, uh, Mad Max maybe. That was a good one right? too right now. Um, yeah, I, it's it's one of those things. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, like, like just today or, you know, in the past few days, I'd go up to the Brockport Walmart and like, again, there's there's no like cleaning supplies or this is getting out of stock. You know, there's like one kind of toilet paper again. It's like, okay, I saw that. So I bought one. We didn't really need one, but like, all right, I'm gonna pick one up extra. I'm gonna try to get, you know, so I, I was at Home Depot today and they had some cleaning spray. So I was like, all right, well, we need some. So I got some, you know, and right. it's, it's just one of those things. It's the same with ammo. I'm not sure, I think it was the NSSF who put the report out that there are 5 million new like brand new gun owners that have never owned a gun before. Oh, I guarantee. So just just there alone, there's a huge hit into you know the ammo you know market right there. Plus some of the manufacturers were shut down. They for were, a, yeah. That, that supply chain, time, you know. So that was interrupted um, there. And, and it's it's just it's just a tough, perfect storm to be in right now. And yeah, you know, Pat, I agree with you. I don't see it getting better, um, you know, anytime soon. And I don't like that. You know, no, I'm not a I'm not a fan, no, right? I would that. I wish I could just like, you know, fix it, but right. Unfortunately, right. we're just here and we're trying to get to to tomorrow, basically, right now. Seriously, yeah. So, man, I don't know. Yeah, I, I really don't have a good, accurate prediction other than just, you know, what I would certainly do un if, unless you like 100% have to. Like, if you're if you're dead set on competing in the tactical games, you have no other option. Like maybe you could do this, but just do not buy from places like Cheaper Than Dirt or the places that are just absolutely Gow like, gouging. Man. You know, like I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. You know, ammo that should go for fifteen to twenty dollars a box is going for sixty, sixty-five dollars a box. Absolute. You know, How could you I, to I certainly believe in capitalism and the free market. Sure. And don't think the government should be involved. But man, that's a terrible thing to do. Tyler yeah. had a guy quote him on the phone. What was the, what was the number that he quoted you over the phone? Like eight hundred dollars for a thousand rounds the other day. It was a five five six. No, it was that's not actually bad. not that bad. It was really. six hundred for five hundred rounds. I yeah, think it was. I was gonna say yeah. Most nine. of those places are over a dollar a round. It's just sad. Yeah. Like these people are in our community, and yeah, that, like, that was screwing, what it was. They're right. screwing people over in our community. You know what? And I mean? they're screwing places like us over because you know a place like you know again I think we've talked about this a little bit before. But like the way the gun industry works on our end, you know, say we've got all these different distributors we work with, right? So I, I've got Mike over at like at Amchar, right? And Mike's a pretty good salesman over there. He might not be their best, but he's certainly not their worst. They'll say that, but he's not. I right. love you, Mike. I know you don't watch these, but whatever. I won't hold that against you. Um, so Mike is one of say 20 salesmen, right? If Mike had a really good week last week, and made Amchar a lot of money, he might go up on their internal leaderboard, right? And when Amchar gets, you know, 100 boxes of whatever. He gets more of that stuff allocated to right, his they're gonna their best salesman, they're gonna give him slightly more to encourage the other people to get more for their clients because that's how they make their money, right? So if they don't have product to sell, they're not making money either. So it's a big game where your salesman has to do well himself, and then you, just like with our streams, we have to keep our 
you know, they have, we have to keep on the salesman's mind as well. We have to buy a lot from these guys. Because there's like a tiered system in place. Because it's the same with them. When he when Mike gets his 10 boxes or whatever he gets, you know, he's going to go through his list and be like, wow, the firing pin spends, you know, X amount of dollars with me every year. I'm going to give them first go. And it's really up to them. If he gets 10 boxes, sometimes he's called us. And again, I would say we're one of his better clients. So he might say, yeah, he'll tell me like, I got 10 of these. You can have nine. And I will give one to somebody else that I'm trying to butter up or do whatever with. But that's completely, and then I've got, 10 other distributors that were playing that game with, you know, so it's a big game, you gotta play, um, but we are desperately trying, you know, we're trying whatever we can, pulling all the strings we can. We actually kept, a distributor sent us like 2,500 bucks worth of ammo we didn't order and didn't want, uh, but when we called them up, we were like, hey, we don't want this, like you gotta take it back. They were like, listen, if you keep it, like you will be bumped up to the top of that list. So it's like, man, like, First of all, are they even going to do that? You know, like, is that really even going to happen? But we take that risk. We kept that ammo. We're trying to sell some here and there. If you need any, um, like, seven or eight bird shot for 12 gauge, we've got a bunch of it, right? Uh, so it, it, it's just, it's a big game. Um, luckily, we've been around for a few years now. Uh, I know there are guys uh, that are trying to start their own shop up right now. And it's just, it's almost impossible because that's what everybody wants, you know? So, yeah, I'm sorry. That's a very long answer, but... I don't see it, you know, yeah, no and, time soon. And just to kind of on the end of what Brandon was saying there, um, understand that when we do get this little bits here and there, generally speaking, it's one of those salesmen like, hey guys, I have like this ragged little bit. I have this tiny little bit we'll take of it. whatever. Yeah. yeah. And we just have to be ready to say yes. Right. So once that stuff comes in, the reason you guys see like a sporadic Facebook post, hey, look, we have one of these things. Yeah, we have one because that's right. what we were able to get. Right. And as soon as it comes in, um, we're trying to push the information to you guys and we're trying to sell it. But understand that this this truck that when when is the truck coming? There is no truck. Yeah. There is no truck. Well, they come every day, but they just don't have any right. on. Them. Yeah. So is what it is. Ty, what else we got? I'm being told that there's local places around here that are selling five five six for sixty bucks a box. Ah. Oof, well, those places hurt. suck. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. I don't care who they are, y'all suck. Like, <laughs> yeah. If you're selling five, five, six for sixty Terrible. bucks a box, I will never spend a dime in your store for yeah. any reason. Yeah, I right? can understand. Like, obviously, like when we got some nine and stuff, the price of for us to get some nine went up a dollar or two. Right. Therefore, we had to raise our price a dollar or two. But right. However, we're we're certainly raising double, a price by a you know, dollar. Right. Yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna right. like. Right? Like I don't need is, to play, yeah. These are our people, you know what I mean? Right. This is our community. We you need to take you can't just, you know, if before you sold 50 boxes a week and you made two bucks a box, you know, you can't sell two boxes a week and still and make, make 50, that 50, yeah. it doesn't work that yeah, way. It's you not know, the you way gotta, it goes. You gotta take care of the people that take care of you, right? right. You guys help us keep right. our lights on. So when we have stuff, we're not gonna try and jack up the price to make a buck off you, right? We're gonna, we're gonna accept the fact that we can't make as much money right now. Right. And when the opportunity comes, you guys will still be coming here because right. we took care of you the best we could. That's right. So that's the idea. We love you. We do. A uh, couple, couple good questions have come in. Sure. Um, Let's do it. You may like this question. Um, differences. Okay. Not differences. Um, pluses and minuses of a featureless New York State rifle or a New York compliant rifle. Oof. And... Um, Let's go into the spur a little bit. Same question, same person wants to know about the spur. So in terms of the spur grip, right? I don't love the spur grip. I will start by saying that. However, if your gun um, is gassed appropriately, right? Like if you have a mid-length gas gun mm -hmm. or you have a mm -hmm. carbine length gas gun even that isn't horribly over gassed, the need to have four fingers holding on to the pistol grip of that AR platform sure. rifle. Sure. Just kind of doesn't exist, right? <coughs> um, because, yeah, I want to be able to pull that rifle firmly into my shoulder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, if I have an appropriate sling, and you guys have sure. seen me do this, yeah. I can take yep. my arm and I can punch out into that sling and by uh, pressing the sling away from me, I can create enough tension mm -hmm. on the rifle to pull it back into my body. So losing out on that pistol grip 
only matters as much as the rest of my shooting platform makes that that matter. Sure. Right? Sure. So as soon as I subtract that pistol grip, if I have an appropriate sling, I haven't lost a whole lot. In terms of like muzzle device and stuff like that, 5.56 five, is somewhat loud. Right. Okay? Um, so would I rather have some device on the, on the uh, end of my barrel? Absolutely, 100%. Do I need it for recoil mitigation or for a break or for compensating or any of the above? Absolutely not, right? 5.56 is not all that recoil intensive, guys. Sure. Um, so I've, I've used guns with spur grips and with crowned muzzles with great success and enjoyed them a lot. And even with the Thorsden buttstock, I don't find that to be that big of a disadvantage sure. either. Sure. Um, and it's a great workaround if you're not looking to get into a spur grip because now at least I have my whole hand on the entire sure. gun, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, in terms of your detachable magazine guns, uh, I'm just gonna make this as short and sweet as I can. Don't bother. I'm sorry, fixed magazine. Sure. Guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, yeah. If you're yeah. fixing your magazine and your rifle, you have changed every characteristic that makes that gun what it is, and you have compromised the reliability of that rifle to the nth degree, right? Because what is the first source of most of my malfunctions with a magazine-fed rifle? It is the magazine, yep. right? Almost exclusively, like all of them. G yeah. Like, yeah, generally speaking, the weak link in that chain is going to be the magazine, yep. right? So as soon as I fix that magazine up in my rifle, it's not worthless, it's not useless, it's still a viable gun for, for certain applications. In terms of being able to fight with it, Right. It is right. severely compromised. And it's, you know, to, to expand on that, that is one of the hardest things about dealing with the SAFE Act. You know, the reason we sell so many with a fixed magazine is because that's the easiest and mm -hmm. cost-effective way to do it. Right. You know, because it's difficult to get a gun. First of all, it's very difficult to get a gun, like, from a that distributor. purpose-built, right. non-compliant. Like, or with, compliant. with one of those swords and stocks, or with a spur, or with a fin, they're extremely hard to get. You yep. almost never get them because uh, the distributor or the manufacturers just don't make that many because it really only applies to New York and California. So right. They just don't care that much. As many gun owners as there are in those states, it's just really tough. So yeah, I'm with Pat. Like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna own an, like if you can only own like one AR-15 and that's gonna be like your AR-15, it has to have a removable mag. It, ha it just has to. 100%. However you accomplish that, it just it has to be accomplished. Um, you know, again, easiest way to own them is fixing the magazine. And at least then you can own it. Uh, the Safe Act says that those magazines cannot be readily removable. That's the exact words from the Safe Act. So, so as you know, subjective too. there are many ways you can, you can lock that magazine in place. And, you know, I don't want to say like unlock it or unpin it, but there are various different methods. And uh, I would just maybe suggest if you're going to have a locked magazine, maybe have that plan of, again, you know, if I need to, how am I gonna revert this back to the original intent, which would not be legal in New York. Do not do it. Yeah, but nobody's advocating that, for you to do that you know, at all, but. What's that, without rule of law? Like, if we get down that path, then obviously it's off, you know, who cares? Right. Do what you gotta do. Yeah, if, I, if I'm wearing my gun open on a sling, yeah. um, because we've deteriorated to that degree, you can bet it's gonna have a 30 round magazine. In oh it. yeah. And you can bet that magazine is gonna be detachable and you can yep. bet I got a bunch more with it. Yep. So, um, but again, that's if then, right? When yeah. we cross that, that milestone, then we will all know and we will all be outfitted appropriately, right? That's Unless right. and until we're gonna to have to work within the law or work you know, at an FFL or, or whatever you guys are gonna to have right. to do. Um, but yes, short answer for me is, if the gun is for fighting, don't fix the mag. Boom. Boom. I like that. Uh, difference between 5.56 five, and 2.23 wilds. So, uh, all those are is chamber dimensions, right? I used yeah. to have a little graphic that went along with this. The 2.23 wild has a slightly... I'm trying to remember, is the lead longer or shorter? I think the lead has to be longer because the pressure so. is lower, right? So 5.56 five, NATO is gonna have the tightest of those three chambers. 223 is gonna be the loosest of the three chambers. 223 wild is gonna be right there in the middle, 
right? And that all has to do with, with pressure. So all 223 Wild is, it's a chamber dimension that is designed to encompass the characteristics of the 223 Remington and the 556 NATO and combine them into an efficiently uh, set, an efficient setup, right? So all that is, is a chamber dimension. It's not a different caliber. You're still gonna be either shooting 223 Remington or 5.56 NATO ammunition. The difference there is the 223 Remington is not gonna be appropriate to shoot your 5.56 NATO right. ammunition through. Right. Um, the 223 Wild is gonna be appropriate in either case, as is the 5.56 NATO. Right. All right. So yeah. um, there's a great more information out there on that. And if you want to do a little bit of research, I suggest that you do so and look it up in a graphic form. So you can actually see the different shapes of those chambers. And that'll give you a good idea of what's happening inside. Because every time you press that trigger and you fire that rifle, understand that your case is going to expand to some degree to conform to the dimensions of that chamber. I think practically, and I'll probably get flamed here a little bit, but I think practically there's really no, there's no difference. You're not, you're not going to see any difference. Right. No, like inform, if, like in terms like of performance. If, you know, if you could buy both, take your pick. It really, you know, right. I, don't buy just a 223 Remington, I would say. Right. Which most AR-15s, you're not like, you would have to buy one specifically like one of those Remingtons if they're yeah, still making like an R15 them. Or, yeah, like yeah, something of that More nature. for hunting, right. you know. Um, but yeah, like, you know, if, if you could only buy a 5.56, five, buy one. Like, if all you could find was a 223 Wild, Willie, whatever they are, Wild, buy it. Like, it's not going to matter, you know. Yeah, I, I have a 5.56 NATO gun, and I have a 223 Wild gun, and I don't really have a preference between yeah. the two. And I don't really care um, what ammunition goes in either one, because, again, 223, sure. 5.56, five, either way, right. we're happy, right? Yeah. So, uh, they're both great. Um, you have to decide which one is going to be best for your specific application. And that's probably going to have more to do with um, what length of barrel and what sure. length of gas system twist that you're rate. looking for and yeah. twist rates and things of that nature versus the chambering, right? So those are the things I would pay more attention to. I would pay attention to barrel length. I would pay attention to gas system length. I would pay attention to twist rate long before I started pay paying attention to 223 Wild versus 556 five, NATO. I love it. Before I ask my next question, I'm going to ask the people watching for a little favor. I want to do an experiment. I want to see, like, I kind of want to, like, see how to break the stream. Uh, if you are watching whatever platform you're on, can you just, like, type hi or period or just something in the chats? Just because I want to see what the chat oh, no. log will do. Oh, um, no. If you could please do that. I just, I just want to see, like, what it can handle. Uh, in terms of, like, incoming. Yeah, in terms of, like, a flood of messaging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. I think that'll be interesting to see. Okay, so uh, ne and now does that lead into your next question? Well, no, I just have a, a general question about M1 Garants. Ah. Uh, why why can't we shoot modern 30 odd six through um, M1 M1 Garants today? Sure. So I can take that one. Again, it goes back to pressure and what the rifle was designed to handle uh, in World War II when they were or pre World War II. They're developing the M1 Garand. They came up with a specific load. M2 ball would be the, the primary one. So it's like but, a 150 grain bullet at like 2,700 exactly. feet per second or whatever it was. Yep. So there's a specific load that that rifle was designed for. Uh, and standard commercial 30-06 has a much higher pressure. Usually Way that's more like power. 180 grains pushing more like 3,000 feet per second mm -hmm. or right around there, you know. So it's just a much higher pressure. If you put normal 30-06 in a Garand and you shoot it one time, you know, don't do that. But chances are nothing's going to happen. You do it once. If you do it a lot, though, you can bend the actual operating rod. You can you can just mess up. It's it's almost like shooting plus P ammo in a gun not designed for it. Because the op rod just starts to right. run too hard. Hits the back right. of the receiver. Hits the, you know, it just, yeah, it breaks it. it. Over time, it will cause it harm, right? right? And if for some reason, if the rifle, you know, something that you've bought you know, used, you don't know what's been done to that gun before. It might be right at that breaking point, you know, so you never want to, you know, push your luck on these kind of things. Um, but there are some solutions. Several companies make M1 Garand specific uh, ammo. PPU is the one that I can think of right at the top of my head. They make a bunch of it. Um, actually, I think Federal makes some too. Mm -hmm. There's a few companies that are starting to make it now. Winchester did like a, a commemorative and a cool box. Yeah, so you can find some. Uh, or 
you can buy what's called a, an adjustable gas plug. Just like you'll have, like we were thinking this Caltech has, several other modern military firearms have that. For a similar reason, adjusting if, if my ammo is a little weak or if it's a little overpowered, you can tune it. I can that. open up the port a little bit, get right. a little bit more gas in so there. So I don't think they're much. I, I, I should own one. I have a grand. I don't have one on. Uh, but they're not much. They're like 40, 50, maybe 60 bucks. Right. Maybe not even that much. The relatively easy thing to do, adjustable gas port. If you Google that, you'll find it for the Garand. Um, we also, I, Josh told me not to tease this, but we potentially, for those Garand fans out there, we potentially would be getting like a lot of original, still sealed in the spam can Garand ammo. Uh, we from had, Greece, right? Yeah, which is really good stuff. The yeah, Greek the stuff in the 50s. Really good, uh, yeah. HXP, which is the same thing as M2 Ball. But yeah, like literally just one of those things you never know. We talked about this, I think, last stream or the stream before. That's my favorite part about this business is you just never know what's going to walk through that front door. And today, you know, a, a guy came in and was like, yeah, I've got, I've got like a few cans at home. And he called up and it was literally like over 20 cans that so hopefully we're going to buy. Yeah. Ammo, yeah. Supposedly he's coming by tomorrow. So... You know, I wasn't supposed to like tease that because it might not happen. We don't like teasing stuff. We don't know what's going to happen for sure, but he seemed pretty reliable. So, yeah. So, if you have an M1 Garand and you want to buy some original, like, good ammo for this that you should be running, we're going to have some here soon. Very so, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Ty, what else you got? Um, so... That worked? Did people listen to you or no? Yeah, a few people listened. It's not cool. as many as I would like. Hurts cool. a little bit, but that's, that's okay. Right. You're used to that. Yeah, everybody ignores me. It's fine. Just remember the first cut is the deepest. <laughs> but the second is the most fun. Jesus. <laughs> uh, Bear Brandon in 2024. Sadly, Brandon can't run until 2028. But he has my vote. Wait, yeah, you're right. How, you know. Just kidding. You know. How would you know that? <laughs> uh, Bear Brandon in 2028. We've got this. There uh, we go. Let's campaigning. It's never too soon to start campaigning. I guess. I guess. That scares me. <laughs> Imagine you leading the country. That scares me. Yo, you're almost old enough to lead a country. Remember, no, what, happened to, remember what happened to like JFK? That's what would happen to me. <laughs> like. <laughs> no. Don't. A mostly peaceful car ride. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that meme was really funny. I saw that. Oh, man. Mostly peaceful car ride. That is true. It was true. Such an insulting like rifle to get shot with, too. Car oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was that was a hard sidetrack. Uh, R.I.P. JFK. <laughs> Took a hard left turn. Big there. after the chat. Oh, Big after the chat for JFK. Um, is that insulting? No. Okay. No, God, I think no. we're good. No, we're it's, good. It's been long. It's enough. been a long time. Um, yeah. P was like JFK. Uh, <laughs> I have that shirt. <laughs> I've never. I haven't actually printed it, but I have. I have that. I've made that. Nice. Um, don't tell my grandma. Thanks. Uh, there was a question I had. So. Um, dating back, she is, she is watching. Uh, uh, dating back to uh, the the five five six two two three wilds question, sure. um, Mr. Mr. Rotter asked uh, about like Tony. long range precision, like long range shooting five five six versus two two three wild. Is there is there going to be a large difference with that? So two twenty three uh, wild is again, it's just a chamber dimension, right? So uh short answer no not not anything that you're going to be able to appreciate no. um because again all that is is just the amount of room in the chamber um for the case to kind of expand and allow the pressure to to build to an appropriate level versus you know potentially to an inappropriate the only thing i would expand not to like counter that point no, the, only, the only time it might is again like we were talking about earlier like you wouldn't do this with a handgun because it doesn't matter but in this situation, this is where it might matter if you had, you know, a 223 Wild and a 556, and you could somehow track down 50 different kinds of factory ammo. Oh, you yeah, might be so able to find. We might combo. be able to you know isolate I mean? but, yeah. some. But but generally, yeah, like like any random off the shelf 556, any random off the shelf 223 Wild, I don't think you'd find a discernible difference. Again, you're gonna find more of that if you tweak your twist rates and grain weights and all that kind of stuff. And what I was yeah. going to say too is like if you're if you're getting into something very like if you're getting into serious long range shooting with 556, five, first of all, better caliber than you might think out to like 6 and 800 yards mm -hmm. realistically. Mm -hmm. Um guys have hit uh with 16 inch guns, 1000 yard shots yep. all day. So it's very possible, right? Um however, 
if you're going to do something like that, you're going to want to start hand loading, right? Because you're right. going to be looking for yeah. 72, 77 grain bullets. You're going to be looking for powders in specific burn rates. You're going to be looking for cases that are trimmed exact, right? right? So that everything is uniform across the board. So in that instance, if you start developing like a hand load for a 223 wild chamber, and then you take that same hand load and you shoot it in a 5.56, then you're going to start sure, to run into some sure. issues, absolutely, right? Or yeah. potential potential for some discrepancies, sure, yeah. right? In terms of They'll what shoot you're going to, yeah. right? Yeah. In terms of what you're going to see from a performance perspective, dude, get out the micrometers, yeah. right? Because like, <laughs> yeah. you're going to be yeah. with a chronograph and you're going to be really trying to isolate differences that are in like tens of feet per second not hundreds of right, feet per second right. and you'll be trying to isolate variations in point of aim point of impact that are measured in fractions of an inch as opposed to inches so far past that decimal point like right. I, just, I don't have the patience for it yeah I'm not, yeah I'm not no enough. it's it's not going to start to matter it the biggest change might be the bullet goes transonic which means it goes back below the speed of sound 10 yards sooner sure. right out of one chamber than the other twist has relation to that stuff too right absolutely oh really yeah twist, twist rates and that, that, that. I, i'm so, not gonna okay. say that's like beyond us but we we could spend you could you could take like a whole like it's definitely beyond level. the yeah. yeah it's definitely beyond the scope of this specific discussion and what we want to yeah. what we want to devote time to um in terms of twist rates guys heavier bullets faster twists right 77 grain bullets i want a one and seven twist right um 55 to 62 grain bullets any twist, one and seven, one and eight, one and nine, those are all going to work fine to a point. Um, your 55 and 77 or 55 and 62 grain bullets at a certain distance, you might find that they're overly stabilized from a one and seven gun, mm. which means on a long enough trajectory, they might start to yaw a little bit sooner mm. because they're rotating a little bit faster than sure. what they should be, right? Um, but with longer bullets, we need those bullets rotating faster because they stay stable in flight for longer. So if we shoot a 77 grain bullet out of a one and eight twist barrel, um, we, we're gonna have good results out to a point. And then beyond that point, one and seven would have been a better sure. twist rate because sure. just that extra one revolution or just that extra you know, uh, inch taken off that complete turn of that bullet right. is gonna keep it stable in flight for longer. Right, so Ty, I don't know if you were out there that one time. I used to have a Remington 700, 16 inch barrel, uh, like SPS model or whatever, yeah, yeah, had a yeah, loophole yeah. scope. We were out at the farm shooting 77 grain uh, Black Hills. So ammo. That's probably like one in 10 twist barrel or something like that. Uh, so. I think it was, yeah. yeah. I think it was. So you're looking, and you want to be shooting 50 or 55s. Well, no, you know what? I think it was a one in seven because. Um, or it might have been a one and eight. Okay. But that that thing was a tack driver with these seventy seven grains. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we so we had eight, some nice seven, we had some nice eight. wind coming, and you would almost think you were shooting like three oh eights. Like it was hitting that hard, hitting those targets. We were shooting targets at like six seven hundred yards, like you said, really maxing out. You know, combat effectiveness for, for especially five, with six. a sixteen inch barrel. Yeah. You could just stuff. hear. You know, like Ty was shooting his Daniel with like fifty five grains, and he was making hits consistently, obviously. And you just hear, you know, the tink. Tink of the steel, and then I'd shoot those 77s, and it would just be like, tonk! Like, you could hear so much and more just energy. hit it yeah, with yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love that Black Hills. I mean, it's expensive, don't get me wrong, but for that's what I run as like my defensive rounds in an 77 AR. 77 grains, the like 77 SMKs. Grade, yeah, yeah. The, the Sierra Match Kings. Yeah. Open tip match. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah, those okay. things are disgusting, Nasty. yeah. Um, yeah, we're getting pretty late in the evening. What else we got there, Ty? Maybe some lightning round stuff? Some. Uh, how are we doing for viewership? Yeah, the viewership is starting to tail off too. Well, so. that, it's hard because now we have, you know, my... Uh, a bunch of different streams. Yeah, we're on different... So for I, sure. viewership is not as reliable now. Okay. I'll have to check that out after the video. That's fair. Um, I feel like we get this question very frequently about 300 blackout. And we suck um, at answering it, so let's do it yeah. again. <laughs> uh, so 300 blackout, is it here to stay or is it a um, just a trend? Short answer, uh, if you live in a suppressor-friendly state, it's probably going to stay, but in New York, we can't have suppressors, so yeah. it's probably not going to be as popular I, out here. I think it's lasted long enough, and it's popular enough. I think it'll stay around for, for at least, you know, a while, um, unless something changes drastically, like negatively with the NFA stuff. With, like, if suppressors become very hard to get, again, you know, there's been a huge resurgence lately in suppressor ownership. 
They've made it, you know, they've made some changes that have made it very positive, you know, to own them. Um, but yeah, it, uh, Ty, Ty hit it right on the head. Three nerve blackout is cool. To me, there's really no point in New York because um, you can't run a suppressor. That's the only, the, to me, that's the only reason three nerve blackout is, is interesting, is running it suppressed. Um, eventually, once Polar Wave is up and running, you're gonna be able to shoot some suppressed 300 blackout guns and you're gonna love them. They're the coolest thing ever. Uh, we have a Ruger American, Ruger American bolt action. We've put a suppressor on that. Like you literally, you hear like the click of the trigger, you hear the, the, the hammer like hitting, and then you just hear the thud or the, the ting of whatever you hit. And that's it, that's the only noise you hear. Yeah, you don't get a um, lot of noise. It's just insane. Or running, you know, we have that little uh, SIG, um, SIG's version of like the honey badger basically. The rattler. The rattler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, and same thing. You just hear that bolt like going back and forth yeah. and you hear the, like the, the mechanical bits moving and then you just see or hear impact and that's it. So they're a lot of fun, uh, but yeah. Uh, so to answer the question, I think it's staying around. I don't think it'll go the route of like 6.8. Like that's kind of gone, I would say. I mean, it still exists, that? but yeah. There, there are some that are so specialty that I don't think they will exist much longer or they'll just, you know, chug along as reloading cartridges. But yeah, 300 Blackout, I think that's here for a nice long time. I hate it so much. <laughs> I hate it. Like, oh, I'm, I'm being dead serious. I hate it so much. Because if you're not suppressing your gun, who cares? Right? Like, I can, sure. shoot, a, I can shoot a 9 mil 200 yards. Sure. A 9 like a PCC. I can shoot a Ruger PCC. At 200 yards. I guess the only other thing that is somewhat neat to shoot a subsonic. Again, it's fun to maybe experiment with some of this stuff. I don't know if it's worth buying a whole rifle for just this. Although guns can be fun too. There's nothing wrong with that. It is interesting having a cartridge. There's not many rifle cartridges where you can both you can do subsonic. You can get like 220 grain loads that are barely you know, like 900 feet per second. You know. And then you so can get 38 special. I can yeah, shoot oh 30, yeah, I'm with you. I can I'm shoot 38 you. special. You know, not good for, for defense. Uh, or you can get the you know the 110 grain supersonic stuff. That's you know, there's a lot of guys too that have to have a 30 caliber. You know, like like the AK will always be better than the 556 because it's up in the 30 caliber at 7.62. So there's some of that too. Yeah, but I get it. I just don't care. I don't like having. I, and I don't own one personally. If I owned a 300 blackout, I would be very, very careful with my ammo because I've seen so many. I put a 556 into a 300 blackout and I have a grenade next to my face. You know, I would be very diligent. Like I would, I would maybe not take both of those shooting at the same time, or really, you know, keep this and the ammo in the case. Like shoot the other one. Like do not just dump all the. I mean, we see that enough here in the range. People are shooting a 380 to nine. And they'll come out like, how come my Smith & Wesson shield is, is jamming every shot? It never does that before. Oh, it's like, well, you loaded up your bag with 380s. Like, that's right. why, <laughs> you know? Here's the thing about the 300 Blackout that drives me nuts, right? Everybody that makes just a trash heap of a gun. Okay, yeah. They make them in 300 Black, <laughs> yeah. right? And like, it seems like every time some guy brings a 300 Blackout in here, yeah. it is just a dumpster fire of a rifle. And I end up running back and forth onto the range to try yeah. and fix the issues that they're having because their gun isn't gassed correctly and they just slammed it together at the kitchen table <laughs> uh, on their way like oh, as man. they're eating their cereal to come over here like i just <laughs> seriously like yeah those yeah, are the I'm three other you. blackouts that I'm i have experienced yeah. outside of like sig academy where they have some really nice 300 blackouts sure. and they're suppressed. Shooting like SIG and, ammo. Yeah, sure. we're shooting yeah, like yeah. SIG elite ammo, right? Yeah. So I have those two experiences. I have one shooting really nice suppressed guns on a really nice range with really cool dudes at a really cool school. And then I have um, <laughs> running back and forth out on the range <laughs> to diagnose and fish it, fix issues with guys' garbage guns right. that like, I'm just, I can't stand it. So Too to funny. me, like 300 black is just like, you guys can keep it, man. Um, sorry, responding to somebody on. Yeah, Dave's take your time, page. bro. Okay. Um, so. New York. Do we uh, think that New York is going to follow California's way of 30 round magazines? <laughs> So Wait, even that's that's even that injunction is being held up in court right now. So you, they started to ship some of the companies had started to ship thirty round magazines out to California, 
and they had to put the kibosh on it almost immediately. So the Ninth Circuit made a ruling. Some lawyer filed an injunction. I think it was the California AG filed an injunction to get the court to rehear the case. I'm not sure why anybody would need to rehear that specific yeah. case. They've already made a ruling about the constitutionality of those laws. Um, but even so, even though the law has been deemed unconstitutional, practically nothing, like sure. from a practical perspective, nothing has changed right, right. now. Right, so where Brandon's involved in a lawsuit to actually get some of those laws overturned, along with uh, 2ANYS, um, and potentially that that could happen. But we really need California to set that that precedent with sure. the Ninth Circuit Court, because sure. then there's a federal court decision out there that says, "Hey guys, these things are not in keeping with the Second Amendment and that whole shall not be infringed type thing." There was some good news. I didn't get to read all of it, unfortunately, but our, our lawyer uh, Jim Ostrowski. Uh, he did send over a, an email to some of us involved with the suit saying that actually Pennsylvania, something had happened down in Pennsylvania where a federal judge had ruled that certain restrictions that Pennsylvania did uh, during this whole corona thing were unconstitutional. I think that was that, more related to like Tom Wolf and his powers as like governor and trying it to may have, yeah. executive authority to yeah. enact certain restrictions on people. And right. Stuff like that. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's a good thing, bad thing, like the lawsuit that we have, which I'm, I'm very uh, humbled that this lawsuit is called Lewis v. Cuomo. Like that's, that's pretty, pretty cool, that's I guess. Um, but yeah, there are many facets to that lawsuit. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see what we can do. I still think uh, you guys all know him, Seth, one of the, the young men that used to be in our venture crew. I think he's going to be one of the most integral parts of this lawsuit. Uh, he turned 21 uh, right when Corona was starting to hit, right when the shutdowns happened, and literally was denied a pistol permit because a government office is closed. That to me is so cut and dry. Like that is Could what be the U.S. Constitution, Constitution right, right? Like that is what it's for. Like you can't deny me. You know, the right like to exercise. Every money. other citizen in the state can have it. And that, and that was really New York's only argument was, okay, you don't like the permit regime, but there is a system in place. Deal with it. You know, like you don't like it, but there is a way for you to obtain a pistol in this state. But during that time, you know, there wasn't. There was a solid three, four, five months. And, and you know, again, in the, when we were in the middle of that time, no one knew when the end date was going to be, you right. know, if they were ever going to reopen these offices. You and know? there was no thought on behalf of anybody within the government to say, well, wait a minute. Are we, in fact, restricting these people's rights? Right. Because they didn't care. Right. Yeah. Right. Ultimately, right. like, that is not a focal point. Protecting your rights, your individual rights in particularly, um, is not something that right. our state government cares about. Right. Unless and until somebody makes them care about it. So, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, that's where we stand, I guess, with that one. I, again, I, I, uh, I hate to sound like a pessimist or a realist or whatever, but I really don't see, unfortunately, a lot of headway, you know, happening here in New York. But we got to keep trying. We, know, have, we you, have to keep fighting. You know, every year they're chipping away more of our rights. So if we're not working, you know, if we're not at least trying to bail that ship out, you know, eventually we're going to be like our friends over across the pond in the UK. And have nothing or down in australia you know where they have nothing and um, then they'll have they'll know if your tv's licensed or not and they'll send <laughs> seriously you nasty grand mail <laughs> we know you're watching unregistered television you got a permit for that license mate yeah, so crazy. <laughs> what do you think ty you got anything else over there for us i do polar wave questions and then love it it's getting to be that time yeah love man. it um i'm gonna roll two people's questions into one can you shoot at polar wave? And secondly, can you shoot your 20 millimeter at polar wave? <laughs> First of all, it's may I shoot at polar yes, wave. So um, absolutely not. No, I'm just If you have a 20 millimeter, then like, hit yes, us up. Absolutely, that you can. We'll be out there tomorrow. Okay, that range is open. So it's one of those things. So, you know, obviously I, with every business endeavor that I go into, I always try to work with the town, the local, the, the government, whoever it is. You know, I try to go in there um, and, and just, you know, what are the standards? What are you looking for from me? And we'll work together and we'll meet those, right? I think like most business owners do, I don't try to skirt around things or do things shady or whatever. Um, so I went, this would have been way back in January or maybe February. We went to the town of Batavia and we presented them our plan. Like, Hey, I own polar wave. This is what I want to do. What do you think? You know? 
and they loved it. There's, it's zoned perfectly for it. It's one of those things where there's no legal reason. Now, people might not like it in the town. They might have their own issues with it. They might not be into firearms themselves, but there's no actual legal reason they could deny the plan from moving forward. You still just have to go through the motions, right? So we were starting to make some of those preparations of going, you know, presenting a formal like plan with a site survey and all these engineer drawings and things. We were working on those. Uh, it's really not something, again, you can do yourself. You need to have, like, you need to have a, a, a licensed PE, like, involved, right? You have right. to have an engineer involved, to, to like an architect, essentially, to draw up the plans. Um, so we were getting ready to make some of those moves, and, and then Corona, right, happened. And it was just one of those that, uh, you know, again, I've talked about it before. I, you know, personally was, was just very unmotivated, and it was very difficult. You know, we all went through a very difficult time, uh, you know, as a country together, and, you know, between this store, you know, being actually shut down, you know, by the government, we were shut down for, I think it was 53 days total, um, you know, and that really took a lot, it took a big toll on me, I'll be honest. Sure. And it was very difficult and we just didn't know. Again, I mean, it was day, you know, 50 and we had no idea what was going to happen. You know, I think it was really at the end that they started releasing these phase plans and whatever. So there was a long time where I was just like, yeah, Polar Wave is out there and it can stay out there. And I'm going to pay the taxes on it. You know what I mean? And it could just sit there. And I kind of just forgot about it, you know? And now that things are opening back up, we are working on those plans again. We're starting that, that wheel in motion again. So it'll take some time. Um, we've been shooting out there. Now, we've been shooting in the sense that, like, that's my land. And you're allowed to shoot on your own land. You can just do you know, things that landowners can do. Like, and we're like friends. Yeah, so like, like, right. We have like permission. So it's one of those things where, again, you know, have we had people out there shooting? Yes. Can I have you, peop you know, as much as I love all of you and you are all my friends, um, you know, I can't just, you know, be here, have 30 people show up, and, and we would get in trouble for that. And not, you know, it's not like anything bad would actually happen, but I want to keep that good relationship with the town, you know, again, just like, there's some, there's some things that we've gotten away with here in Virgin, you know, sometimes we'll, I don't want to even say, you know, we, we, have, do stuff. we have done things that, you know, I think if I went to the town and formally asked, they would say no. So out of respect, we don't do them or, you know, and again, we just try to be very polite neighbors, the town of Virgin and the village of Virgin being so close. Everyone has been amazing to us the entire time we have been here. Sure. So we, we'd like to foster that. We want to be good neighbors, just Absolutely. like you do, you know, in your own neighborhood. So it's the same with that. Once, you know, as soon as that town board signs our, our um, I want to say easement, I can't think of the word right now, but a special use permit. As soon as they sign that special use permit, like, as soon as he hits, like, the I or, the, you know, hits the T, like, I want to have Pat out there, like, ripping a machine gun or, like, doing, you know what I mean? Like, setting off We're some tanner, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, as soon as it's possible, we're all going to be out there. We'll do a Barrett Brandon shoot. I'll bring that out there. We'll bring the machine guns. Ty will have his Erie, can uh, Erie Canal signal cannon. Like, we will be out there in force. Like, everyone will know about it. Remember that shot heard around the state they did to protest the SAFE Act? It's going to be like that, okay? Um... But yeah, until then, it really is one of those things, like it's invite only, like Pat will go out there to train, me and my friends will go out there to blow off some steam, you know, for right now, Polar Wave is just my kind of little private, you know, spot. So we're working on it. We were, I was out there all day today, still covered in paint from working on things. Uh, we're, we're chipping away at it. Like I said, we're actually working with an engineer now. Uh, he assured me we should be able to go to the town board in October. And again, start those, start that process again. So, you know, based on, on other projects that I've done, if we get in there in October, we're probably looking at like January, February to be allowed, like to be open, right, officially. So look for the springtime. Yeah, look for the springtime. And to the second question, 20 millimeter, all day. Yeah, all day. We'll figure out, we'll figure out where we're gonna shoot that. But uh, yeah, we might, that, so that, if you're, I don't think they actually have a 20 millimeter, but if they do, we have a farmer in Wyoming County, like right over the border from Genesee County, uh, uh, like just south of Route 20, uh, that maybe a half hour here from the pin, that we could shoot, like, again, if you have a 20 mil, call me, and we'll go there tomorrow. Nuisance we'll, something. We'll go out. Yeah, we, he has a nuisance permit for deer. <laughs> I keep I keep bringing the 50 cal out there. Like, he's a, he's a farmer. He raises cows. He's a dairy farmer. But they sell cows, too, like, for meat, right? And I keep asking him, like, 
how much is one of those cows? Like 800 bucks? Like, no. why do you gotta take it to the, like, let me just, you know, no. shoot it with a bear <laughs> on the field. Yeah, just cows matter, man. Man, yeah, but, you know, think about that. Yeah, but so does seeing the terminal effects of 50 cows. <laughs> on, right? Yeah, I think like, science. Talking. Again, science. Terminal effects you know? matter. That's science. What matters. Oh, man. Well, this was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. One last yeah, do we have like or one or two like, more? Super quick last minute polar wave question. What can they do to help? Other than build that channel. Yeah, so, you know, again, I, I plugged it in the beginning. We should plug it again. Discord. Okay, because just last week, th so there's a whole, like if you're not familiar with Discord, it's almost like a forum where there's different like categories, right? But it's, it's more of a chat, but like a forum where it's split up into different areas. So like one of the channels that we have is just called Polar Wave. And it's everything to do about Polar Wave. And I'm trying to get a little better on it. Like my, the way my life is, it's just also last minute. Like we're not doing anything right now. Like, okay, I got four hours free. I'm heading out there and I'm yeah. gonna get some stuff done. So yeah, it's yeah. just how it happens. but. We were able to last week, I posted a message on there. I said, hey, uh, in a couple days, like on this day, I'm gonna be out there between here and here. And if you want to, come on out and help me. And you know, it's mostly grunt work. It's cleaning stuff up. It's doing weed whacking right now. It's, you know, I mean, that place was abandoned for like four or five years. So there's a lot of just, you know, junk to be cleaned up and, and light construction projects. Like the other day, the guys were uh, helping my dad put a door installing a door on the bathrooms that we're doing. And we were doing some board and batten uh, siding, you know? And it was one of those things, actually, all the guys that came out, um, like Anthony, a guy that came out there, he was like, man, I work like sitting on my butt all day, like working with computers, like, I love this. Like, he couldn't have just been happier just being out, fresh air, you know, doing man stuff, you know, yeah, swinging yeah, a yeah. hammer, just getting dirty. It was a lot of fun, but I just take care of people too, as you all know. Um, if you help me, I'm going to take care of you, you know, for sure. So yeah, if you want to help make Polar Wave happen, join up on our Discord and just be involved because there are going to be times where I'm like, hey, I just need 20 people out here to help me do X, Y, and Z. And we get it done and that, that's what really helps. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for asking. That really means a lot to me. Yeah. Cool. Uh, giveaway time? Giveaway time. Giveaway time. I love it. I'm cutting that's a pretty cool, uh, you know, I know I, I kind of... Just threw that together, you know, but give me one for the uh, I'm going to have you guys get on PMPs here. Oh, oh, what's up down here? Technically. Um, OK, that's fine. We can be on the left side. I sure, guess. Whatever. Giving away um, man stuff. Mr. Rotter is responding man stuff. Yeah, my hands still hurt from swinging. Oh, OK, that was it. Yeah, OK, <laughs> nice. I, I thought I didn't want to like, go regular. on the leap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very regular. that's what I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, good. Um, Look at that little goodie bag. Look at that. Ooh, I'm so excited. The goodie bag yeah. itself is actually pretty cool. I, I have a couple of those. Yeah, I can't I remember where we got those from. I think one of them I left at Polar Wave, so. You did. There's a little yeah, spider home. Yeah, the spiders love it. In it's, there. Uh, it's insulated, so they probably stay yeah. warm or cold. They're close. <laughs> so uh, the name I chose, uh, he's been responding. I try to like make it even. I try to do like any doubles. Um, I think I actually know who this person is. I'm not positive because you were in code JMNC. Um, I'm going to put your name on this just because I've seen you a few times in the chat and you were very active and I appreciate you for that. Uh, guys, we give giveaways every single week. You can win this very easily. Um, all you have to do is just watch us uh, every, every Thursday, 7.15, sometimes 7.25. Um, I have all of these things like under me, like way under me, under the screen. You have all of those little, uh, those little boxes with all of our places to find us that took a long time for me to make. So please, if you are interested in Instagram, there it is. Facebook, Twitch, uh, our website. Are we on IG email. Live right now too? We are not on IG Live. I did oh. not figure that out. Oh, okay. I will figure that out. Um, I know, I'm such a POS. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> You'll get it done. You're such a there. point of sale. Um, such a point of sale. <laughs> such a point of sale, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so please, uh, if you guys really enjoyed this new layout, please let me know. Please let me know anything I can do to improve on this because I'm always trying to make the user experience way better for you guys. I'm getting paid to be here. I don't really care. I love doing this. <laughs> I want you guys to be, you know, in love with this as well. 
Uh, I have nothing else. Do you guys have anything else? No, I'm good to go. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching. It's been a long show tonight, but uh, I think we did a great job, and uh, we really appreciate all the uh, support from you. Absolutely. As always, we love you, and please, stay beautiful, guys. Love it. See you, everybody.